my job this evening is to MC, and I will share a little bit about Mr. Hope with you. Mr. Hope is a business consultant. He's also a small entrepreneur, a BYPT mentor, managing director of Carotel and the Hope Communications Inc. His core business areas are marketing and public relations, energy solutions, internet services. And we have another presenter, Ms. T. Amorski. She is the business development manager with the Caribbean LED Lightning Inc. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and Mr. Hope. Thank you very much. So I have to run up, Jeff. Good to see you again. Um, so today we're going to have a very relaxed um, session. Um, hope you have a bit of fun. Um, I thought we'd focus on two areas. Uh, one is energy conservation. But it's very, very critical. We tend to miss that a little bit sometimes. We think about solar panels and batteries and all that sort of stuff. But energy um, efficiency and conservation is actually a very, very critical area where you can save tons and tons of money um, before you even think about getting into energy solutions. So, um, so it's going to be twofold, really. Um, you know, we want to talk a little bit about energy conservation, and then we want to go through technologies involved in uh, mainly photovoltaic solar systems in two different types. Um, and I know some people are going to ask about how much it's going to cost. Try to see how tweak that a little bit. Um, the, the usual energy tip we um, tend to leave on our radios and television sets and all that sort of stuff. We turn them off, right? Or we actually even plug into the we actually even plug into the wall, and then they just everybody <coughs> ever heard some kind of phantom power. Yeah. But not about it. Too. All right. So while it's there, the radio's turned off, yeah. The television's turned off. Okay. It's still sucking to use the energy, which we don't necessarily think it is using. And again, it all adds up minutes, hours, months, years, it all adds up to money. Yeah? Um, there are a number of ways of dealing with phantom power. And there is. As you can see, this this is of a particular, particularly advanced type of um, you know, energy source, source but it's a lot more than that. What it actually does is it kills the phantom power. So that even if you got it plugged in, it will actually kill the electricity that's going to your, that you're actually using that you think it's turned off, yeah? So those are just a few thoughts really about energy conservation. Um, I read a colleague of mine that says, I have two parents, Wednesday, Wednesday, and he has a walking business, and he changed so all of his lights. And he has a much, uh, used a lot more lights, has a lot more he had like a chandelier and all that sort of stuff. So he invested about twelve hundred dollars in LED lights, yeah? And within about six months or less, he actually made back all the money that he had invested in LED lighting. So I just want to leave you the understanding that there is tons and tons of money that you can actually save simply by using a number of energy conservation approaches, yeah? If I ask a question essentially about um, how do you assess um, your usage and, and auditing and that stuff. So there are two ways you can do it. You can go to some companies and they'll charge you a lot of money to do it for you and they'll bring in all the technology and they'll work it, work, work all the numbers and bring back very excellent data for $5, you. $5,000 later. Or you can go to other companies that will not charge you $5,000 <laughs> and get the same thing, okay? Yeah. Or if you're a small person as yeah, I want to mention you can get one of these devices here, or, or some, some friend who has one. What it basically does, as she mentioned with her uh, her uh, iron, you know, she was able to see how much she was actually using. So this measures, you just plug it straight in, then you plug in the appliance, like your fridge, whatever, electric, whatever, you know, and it will actually tell you over a period of time how much, very quickly, really, how much wattage that unit is actually consuming. So you can figure out whether it's really a uh, uh, energy hog, mm -hmm. or whether well, it's a very efficient uh, unit, or, but more importantly, you would know exactly how much watts it is um, it's providing, okay? Good. So, then you can work on the numbers. What you would do is you go through and you find out all the appliances in your house, if you want to go through that meticulous way, uh -huh. find out all the appliances in your house, work out all, all the numbers, right? Yeah, you know exactly how much each appliance, some the, uh, the toaster does this, and the, the uh, iron, iron does this, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you can work out the usage 
uh, period. So if you know you, your lights are on for six hours a day, or you press for 20 minutes or half an hour a day or whatever, then you can then start to work, calculate. If you want to do your own audit yourself, what your usage is, because energy is really primarily about usage, understanding your usage. And your usage will be different from my usage, from that person's usage. You might have a large business, small business, individual entrepreneur, you do your soaps or whatever, you still have to use energy to, 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 to boil your soaps or your materials or whatever it is, lights and everything else. Yeah? So uh, it's very important to us to understand the usage that we are actually, we have, and then we can figure out how can we conserve, how we can kind of cut down on this usage. Yeah? Okay. Anyway, this contraption over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so basically, um, the two basic types of solar photovoltaic systems. They're the ones that are tied entirely to light and power, so that when a few nights ago, you know, I was on a net, we were having a business meeting online, and the lights went out. But I had a, a backup system, so we were still able to continue our meeting because somebody was in Washington and protested by this place, and et cetera, et cetera. We kind of but all the other partners and, and board members Wait. locally were not able to take part in that meeting because they didn't have a backup system. So there's basically two systems. There is the system that's tied to average line of power, and there's the off-grid system. If you tied to average line of power, when Barbara's land park shuts down, the light in your fridge shuts down. <coughs> so we've actually found some people who've invested $30,000, $40,000 or whatever hard earned cash. And they say, but I have not all this money and the lights went out and my lights were out too, you know? So, yeah, when you type land power, you, you, you have, uh, you type to the grid. Okay? Now, and it would be cheaper, of course, to be tightly grid because there are basically four components in any system. But let's really just see if I can turn this on to see if it works. Oh, it's somewhere. Yeah, it actually works. <laughs> and if you actually had your, your kind of bright, right? LED? <laughs> and if you actually had your charge, you could actually come and plug it in here and, and it would work as well. So the four basic components in any system, depending on what type of system you have. We all know what panels look like. We put them on the roof, we put them to stand up angles or holes or whatever. We all know what panels look like, yeah? So you have the panels that are on the roof, some on the roof. They then come to be connected to, can you see this little blue guy down here? Little blue guy down here, contraption. Right, that guy is what we call a battery charge controller. And bear in mind that the energy that's coming in off the sun, right, is, um, has to be changed so that it can work with all your appliances, yeah? But your appliances are different from what you're getting from the sun. So you need a device that's going to help change some of these things throughout the world. Good question. When you turned it on just now, was it using the ambient light in here to do what you did? No, no, no. It is... It was exactly how it would have worked if you had a, a, a off-grid system. Yeah, we might have before went off. So you have your panels, 1, 2, 20, 50, 15, whatever, whatever, whatever. Come down to your battery charge controller, right? So this battery charge controller is a very important device. It does two things. One, it, um, it helps regulate the battery, because the battery charge control is not connected to the batteries for storage if you have off grid. If you have an off grid system, you have to have batteries, yeah? So the battery charge control is con connected to your batteries. And what that does is it helps to ensure their health, that they last long. Because if you don't have a battery charge controller, you will just pump a lot of energy into your batteries and it will go bad very, very quickly and all your electric goes on the roof. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so we can put the panels on your roof, we can buy a charge controller, panels mm -hmm. connect by a charge controller, mm -hmm. by a charge controller connect to your batteries, so the energy comes from the sun, goes flows through onto your batteries, batteries are topped up, by a charge controller make sure that they do not, you know, they're, 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 they're not damaged, yeah? yeah. And then the energy now, you, you have it connected, your battery's connected to an inverter, right? right? Yeah. An inverter, it's at this point now, that the inverter can address the type of appliances that you have. But different types of energy to so they have to be converted so that your fridge now can plug into the inverter, yeah? Now, each of these technologies is a science. 
because they're in panels and they're panels. Um, but four years or so ago, the price of panels started coming down. Right now, you shop, if you get tier one panels compared to tier two or tier three, and you know, uh, most people are going to tell you if you buy tier two or tier three. Tier three is kind of junk. Tier three is almost junk. And tier one is really the best quad panel you want. If you get a really good, reliable tier one panel, that will last up to 25 years. Yeah? So it's a good investment. The prices have been coming down, they keep coming down. Yeah? Um, the battery charge control now is again by charge control and by charge control. The sound are very simple, they're not very efficient, they will do the job, but they're not as efficient as others. Depending on how the quality of your by charge controller, you'll have far more efficient flows of energy from the sun into your batteries. So, for example, if you have your, let's say, four panels or whatever, and I'll say from 8 o'clock in the morning when the sun starts to come up until about 3 34 or 30, whatever, a very good battery charge controller will mean that you will get much more energy flowing into your batteries quicker um, than compared to the cheaper one. How are you dealing with the heat? Heat? Yes. It works very good. If you're storing all that energy, it's generating heat. Yeah, but it depends really on where you're going to store it and safety and that sort of thing. Yeah. You're not going to put them under your bed or next to your bed as some people do. <laughs> because, you know, they're not <laughs> very <laughs> safe. Um, and and if the, when you install, of course, you can make sure the electricity installs all those special appliances to make sure that they're, they're, they're kind of as safe as they can be. Yeah. But more than likely, you're going to have them probably outside in a nice uh, waterproof box or whatever, you're going to, or even if they're inside somewhere, you're going to at least try to get them the venting, some sort of venting done somewhere else. Yeah. So, the, so typical battery storage is not what is displayed here? This is just a, a demonstration a model. demo system. Okay, okay. Right, okay. But, but a battery, a typical battery is what? How? Well, you could have, yeah, you could have 100 watts, you could have 200 watts, depends on, again, it can boil back, first of all, and then your usage and your needs. Right? If you the, and what your wants are, what your income is. Right. We all tell people start small and grow. If you don't have all the money to do it right now, just like um Kimor and her and, and her bubbles, right? If you can't not open your entire house tomorrow, mm -hmm. start as I did, two, four, six, eight, and said work on us key areas first of all. Mm -hmm. But um so this is essentially four four items that go in the panels, the by charge controller, the batteries and the inverter. Now, if you have a grid based system, you, you're gonna, you don't need batteries, so you don't need storage. Um, you're not, you're not going to need an inverter, so you can cut away from some of those costs, right? But again, remember, grid phase means up with the grid, down with the grid, yeah? If, however, now you want to get into uh, a battery based system that means that whatever oh, is black and dark and everything else, you can say you have your lights and, and, and your chicken farm is still working well, and your fridge is still working, etc., etc. You may have to invest in a, again, a storage system, the batteries. And again, every technology is a science. So, your batteries and your batteries, your inverters, you really need to get the best advice from the best people so that you don't end up investing badly. Yeah? <laughs>